Today I will perform an anatomic demonstration of the cervical spine utilizing the M-Turbo ultrasound system utilizing the C60 curvilinear probe. The point of this exercise is to demonstrate the anatomic considerations when performing cervical epidural steroid injections and cervical facet injections. Typical patients may have a variance in their anatomy and the traditional approaches utilizing loss of resistance techniques for cervical epidural steroids can present some challenges. The purpose of utilizing the ultrasound system for an anatomic survey is that the patient who normally has a cervical epidural steroid injection performed under fluoroscopic technique may occasionally encounter false losses of resistance. Utilizing this particular tool as a sounding device may perhaps improve the accuracy of injection. The way this is performed is utilizing again the C60 probe, setting the depth to approximately 9.2 centimeters, remembering that the average depth to the epidural space is approximately six centimeters. The nerve setting will also be used to highlight any neural structures that may be of interest. On the patient, initially, I like to mark utilizing a Sharpie the C7 uh, spinous process. This is the most easily palpable spinous process and this is facilitated with the patient in the prone position, a bolster under the thorax and the head slightly uh, flexed. I place a copious amount of gel across the patient's C7 spinous process and then utilizing the probe in the transverse, that is the left to right positioning, I place contact on the skin and clearly visible is the patient's uh, C7 spinous process. In this particular view you can also see the lamina and the transverse processes of T1 just below. And in the center of the screen, under the shadow of the spinous process, is a white line. This white line, and I will highlight it here, demonstrates the actual location of the epidural space. So looking off to the right of the screen, we can see that the depth is approximately five centimeters in this particular patient. Other potential views include the craniocaudid orientation or sagittal plane of the probe and placed along the neck and slightly off midline Again, now can be seen newer structures. In this particular case, the facet joint line is very clearly indicated at these locations. The actual location for a medial branch block would be on these superior surfaces on the lateral mass. If the probe is then rotated further out and a more oblique view obtained, the actual foramen of the nerve roots can thus be discerned. And as we move further cephalad, it is possible to view the vertebral artery pulsations. And this obviously is a structure that would want to be avoided at all costs. This concludes a successful anatomic survey utilizing ultrasonography of the cervical spine.